into this ring, he poured his cruelty, his malice, and his will to dominate all life. One ring to rule them all. What we've done is a culmination of a huge amount of work involving thousands of people. The title of the two towers refers to the Tower of Orthanc, which is where Saruman, Christopher Lee's character, is based, and the Tower of Baradur in Mordor, the home of Sauron. Film two, like uh, every film in this uh, trilogy, is a challenge. <laughs> and uh, will remain so until we deliver it. It's a great movie. It's going to be bigger than film one. I think definitely that there is such care that went into making these movies and to be able to transfer that information to the team that's building the games is great because I know they're putting in an equal amount of care and effort into bringing a really rich game to the public. Tolkien describes Edoras very vividly in the books as being a city of wooden buildings on a hill in front of a range of snowy mountains. When we were originally doing our location scouting, I said, look, we've got to find somewhere in New Zealand, there's got to be a hill like this that's in front of the mountains. So they went helicoptering all around the country and they came back with a photograph of the absolute perfect hill. It was about 60 or 70 miles away from the nearest town. It was in the middle of the South Island. It was very remote. We spent about seven or eight months actually constructing these huge buildings. The end result was that in the movie we have an Edoras which is, which is thoroughly believable. I was able to go there and just shoot as if it was an existing location. One of the exciting things about the EA games and what I've been seeing in the models as they've been built is a great replication of our sets and our characters to the point where EA worked out a deal with our actors so that they would come in and record their own dialogue. The actors were quite excited about it. The battle for Helm's Deep is over. The battle for Middle Earth is about to begin. We got a miniature of Helm's Deep, but what was interesting was that it wasn't just a model, it was a huge miniature. It was a quarter scale, but it was in itself about 30 or 40 feet wide. And it was so big that we could just photograph it with our cameras and it wouldn't look like a miniature, it just looked totally believable. What makes a great movie is really a great script and, and a great cast. I imagine when you're doing a game, it's many of the same challenges. You've got to attract the right talent to the game. You've got to get a story that will attract an audience and then become excited by that story and compelled by that story to actually see it come to life. There is nothing we can do for Frodo. The quest will claim his life. Rohan is weak and ready to fall. And so he will strike hard and fast to the world of men. War. This story will crush us and we want it. In the lands of Middle-earth, legend tells of the Dark Lord Sauron and the ring that would give him the power to enslave the world and has now found its way into the hands of the most unlikely person imaginable. I'm a huge game fan, so obviously I wanted to find out all the details about a Lord of the Rings video game. I'll get myself into uh, a mode of playing where I'll play all the time and it's generally when I'm playing like an adventure game that I'm, my head's in, once I get in I can't stop thinking about it and I have to take my character to the end. This task was appointed to you and if you do not find a way, no one will. Take cover! So I've been kind of asking around about this thing and I finally got to play it and it's unbelievable. It's just beautiful to look at. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, go on Aragorn. Come on. They are coming. It's, it's kind of a bonus to be able to turn on a video game and have me running around. 
I'm getting my ass kicked. Frodo looks like me. Isn't that cool? So cool. They will find the ring and kill the one who carries it. No, Frodo! Come on, Frodo! They want the ring. They must not take it. The difference um, between ADR for a film and sort of voicing a game is that ADR for a film is generally to picture. Um, you're kind of looking at the film and trying to copy the dialogue that you've done before and get it in sync with the dialogue for the film. Who are you? You frightened? Yes. Not nearly frightened enough. For the game, it's not to picture, and it's just a lot of kind of atmospheric elements that you kind of throw in, you know, um, danger, help, that sort of thing. Aragorn! Help! Aragorn! Aragorn! I'm a fan of action figures and I'm a fan of games, and if I get to be included, it's just, what it's the, a total geek bonus, so I dig it. Even the smallest person can change the course of the future. I'm so excited and I can't wait till I have my copy. It's wicked. The fate of the world will soon be decided. The peril of the ring bearer deepens, for there is another who hunts the ring. I have never played a video game in my life. I can never understand the rules. I've got very large and clumsy hands and uh, not quite the hand-mind uh, coordination that I think is necessary, which seems to be available to everyone under the age of six. What's so wonderful about this game, Lord of the Rings, is that you are getting the voices of the original actors, uh, all of them. And uh, today I've uh, been doing the recording of Gandalf the Grey. Uh, and Gandalf the White, the two characters that I play in Lord of the Rings. What can you see? There are markings. It's some form of elvish. I can't read it. There are few who can. There is a union now between the two towers, Orsac and Baradur. For the game, it's uh, a little rougher, a little readier, a little more um, immediate, perhaps. One of you must enter to help those villagers who are still alive. Basically, this is an aggressive bit of fighting. It's the military side of Gandalf that comes out, the commander, the samurai, the leader. You shall not pass! And so what you're seeing on the screen is as near as damn it the Gandalf that you're seeing in the movies and uh, I wish I could come and play the game with you. Probably the most intimidating aspect of embarking on this project was the sense that we have this incredible responsibility to deliver on an interactive format in the same way Peter Jackson had delivered in film. He has taken some of the most beloved literary works of all time and translated them into an epic film masterpiece that has created millions and millions of fans worldwide. Are you frightened? Yes. Not nearly frightened enough. At the beginning of a project, you're working on the conceptual side and the design side. As the project progresses, programmers, artists, animators, environment artists, modeling specialists, texture specialists, all these people are thinking about their one area of the game, but in terms of the overall experience. 
One of the advantages of being able to work so closely with the filmmakers is we were able to use the models and props that they created for the film as reference for the stuff that we needed to create in our game. In designing Aragorn, we really had to think about all three playable characters at the same time. For example, Legolas is much more of a speed and finesse oriented character. Gimli is a small the battle tank. Aragorn is more a blend of the two. We looked at the moves that each of the characters made frame by frame before we started to build anything. Then we would create a wireframe of the character. This is their basic proportions and size and scale. Then we would add texturing and lighting to complete their wardrobe and add the fine details of their character. The actors were very interested in uh, working with us. In one case, Viggo Mortensen showed us some of his action moves. He and his stunt double open up a crate of swords and start sparring with one another. That became the basis for many of Aragorn's moves. When we were selecting scenes from the film to include in our gameplay, Balin's tomb really stood out as a strong candidate. It's one of the most memorable moments in the first film. We wanted to recreate the sense of ambiance. It's this very strong beam of light on the tomb itself. It was a challenge for our environment modelers and lighting specialists. The village of Rohan levels are unique in the sense that they allowed us an opportunity to expand upon areas within the film. The actual game level itself looks and feels very much like the film locations in terms of lighting, uh, the shape of the architecture, the people who were there, but we actually build upon that in this particular case and create areas of the level for the player to explore and fight in that they perhaps didn't see in the film. There is a union now between the two towers, Orsank and Baradur. What's uh, wonderful about this uh, game, Lord of the Rings, is that you are getting on your own screen the voices of the original actors, uh, all of them. Help, Aragorn! Aragorn, help! It's incredibly authentic, and I think it's really difficult to make a game based on a film. This game does it. It's very much like the film. We designed a very dynamic music system that reflects the mood of the actual events in game. One ring to bring them all, and in the darkness, fight! In the film, Saruman attacks Helm's Deep with 10,000 Yurikai, so we had to use other elements at our disposal to create the sense of battle. Through sound effects and audio, we really make it feel like there's thousands of orcs in the location. If someone plugs in the game and they say to themselves, oh my god, this is the film, then we've achieved exactly what we set out to do. This is the place that I remember from the film. I'm there, I can do something. It's now my turn. That's the way we want the player to feel.
try to go into those minds, you know what they awoke in the darkness. I really enjoyed making the game because you don't have to do so much darn hard work as you do when you're originally creating the character. Shooting a film is necessarily very slow. The wonderful thing about the computer game is, of course, I don't have to get into makeup. When you do the game, you stand in the studio and you say, well, I think you ought to say this and this and this, and they've got a pile of scripts, and you say all these wonderful lines. Ambush! Ambush! And then they take all that and they incorporate it into the game and you get some of the credit. Those explosive devices must be destroyed. I love this model of me as Gimli. I think he's such a vigorous, virile, attractive character. He's really the only person you want to play. I mean, the rest, you know, the Aragorns, you know, the Legolases, you know, handsome, good-looking guys and all that thing. But for real quality warfare, you have to go for a Gimli. We spent 14 months in the most beautiful locations in the world in New Zealand to get the right look for the film. The game is a wartime combat situation, and it's wonderfully and brilliantly created. I can't leave him there! What a time-consuming thing it's going to be. I mean, I, it's a new addiction that I have discovered. So, gamesters, well done. Congratulations on getting into this little niche that gives you the interview. I wish I could tell you how to play the game better, but in fact, I could never get to this level. Good luck with it, and carry on playing. Strangers from distant lands, you've been summoned here to answer the threat of Mordor. Middle-earth stands upon the brink of destruction. None can escape it. Night or you will fall. I'm always amazed when I see the advancement of technology and stuff and how kind of close to the, to the real thing it's got to. I must get to Boromir now! When you're recording the ADR for a film, you know, you're obviously watching the screen, seeing the action play in front of you as you played it on the day. When you're laying the track down for this, there isn't a camera on you, and you're not trying to lip-sync to an image in front of you. 
so you can really go that extra mile and sort of accentuate and sort of elaborate what's on the page. Back to the pits that spawned you. Back to the pits that spawned you. They're more heightened than you would get in the movie, do you know what I mean? They're kind of slightly ridiculous and, and it's fun, you know, it was kind of fun just to sort of really play with it in that way. Come, you cannot win that fight. Le Afra Darai. Le Afra Darai. I think if I was playing the game, it would be nice to know that the real actors have vocalized the action that the computer generated character is playing. And I guess the more reality you have within the computer world, the more exciting it is for the player. You cannot wield it. None of us can. The ring must be destroyed. The fate of the world will soon be decided. The whole process of, of the video game construction and building of it is new to me. We're fighting things and ninja things I don't know. I was surprised. I mean, it, it looks much more realistic. It seems like it goes to another level. I think uh, Aragorn's aim in the video game is, is better than my own, but <laughs> I'm not going to complain about that. By my life or death, I can protect you. You have my sword. What I've seen of the of the video game seems to reflect the fact that the second movie, as opposed to the first one, is on a bigger scale. And I'm looking forward to seeing them just as I am to seeing the rest of this game. I've only seen a sample today. I was glad to see, for example, that sometimes Aragorn gets knocked over or falls down or rolls around, and that his fighting style alters, you know, to fit the situation. It's not always neat and tidy, you know, it's kind of a... Sometimes he can be a bit of a, a brawler, at least that's the way he did it in the, in the, in the movie, and, and the game reflects it, I think. It's impressive. Yeah! 